Hey there and welcome. Thanks for your interest in the session Viva package. In this video, we'll first uh, talk generally about uh, why this indicator is uh, important, some background info to put it in uh, context and perspective, and then move on to show you ways in which you may use it. So this is uh, really a lot about understanding the institutional perspective of the markets on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the volume weighted average price is a benchmark used to control execution cost. For one, institutional traders do not want to move the markets as they enter large positions. So they have to find an area where the majority of uh, the days or the weeks transactions uh, occur. And uh, generally the VVAP speeds up during uh, high volume and it will slow down uh, on low volume. So it's a dynamic way of accounting for the obvious truth that more money traded means uh, more market impact. You can think of it as uh, sort of the capitalist democracy of the market with uh, one vote per contract, not one vote per trader. And uh, that reflects something I think we're all willing to accept that the market is uh, driven really by the large players. So greater participation, greater importance, and therefore greater emphasis on higher volume candles relative to the day's total, of course. So this is what the daily VWAP looks like, 15 minute chart of the ES here. It uh, plots the volume weighted arithmetical mean of all transactions uh, that take place during a daily session. Prices for every transaction during the day are then added and divided by the total contracts traded during that time. And the VWAP here is anchored at the start of the full session. And we see here a blue staple line when prices are moving above it and briefly here red when moving below. Um, and uh, these uh, first standard deviation bands, you can think of those as the value area. Statistically, 70% of all transactions during the session will take place uh, in that area and institutional traders are looking to execute as close as possible to the VWAP within the first standard deviation where they'll find plenty of supply and demand. And of course, by knowing whether institutional traders are likely to participate, you can look for directional setups that are likely to see some traction. So in a uptrend like this, you're looking to buy when prices retrace back into the VWAP value area. And once prices move towards the outer standard deviation bands, institutional traders are likely to take a step back and we're probably going to see some rebalancing. So these are overbought scenarios and can be used to identify possible exits or reversal setups. And just to give you a little bit of background uh, on why institutional traders pay so much attention to this, um, basically bonus payouts are uh, often directly linked to where they execute relative to the VWAP. Standard deviation uh, from the VWAP is a objective measure. So better execution than the VWAP will equal higher bonus payouts. The daily VWAP can also be anchored at the start of the regular session, which is what you see here. We've zoomed in a bit from the previous uh, chart, five minutes here of the ES. And uh, with our version, you can of course also create a custom starting point. So you can also start here um, somewhere in the pre-session, um, anchor your VWAP there or wherever you would like to. Again, the classic approach is to locate directional setups that retrace back to the first standard deviation value area of the VWAP. And so those are called inside out trades. As you're going from inside value towards the outer standard deviation bands. 
and then conversely trades that go from the outer standard deviation bands in towards the value area are called outside in trades. So I generally recommend combining these readings with the key support and resistance levels. Uh, for example, here we see the overnight high and the uh, mid-level here of the overnight. We see here a break of uh, the overnight high at the regular open and then a retracement back to the value some traders got a better execution than the viva up here and potential exit out here at the second standard deviation bands or taking one contract off here implementing a trailing stop loss and then yesterday's high level up here for a second target all right, so uh, that's the basic um, way of using the VVAP. Now we'll have a look at uh, how to use prior VVAP levels um, and value readings to determine directional bias as well as uh, support uh, resistance. So this is uh, back to the VVAP uh, um, anchored at the full session start. We move to 15 minute chart again. And uh, we see two sessions here and the yesterday VVAP, you can find that here. And value area high is the first upper standard deviation, value area low is the lower first standard deviation from the VVAP. And basically some of the best uh, short term setups are found when prices move out of the previous day's value. And uh, here we saw the market move out of the value area high during the pre-session indicating a long bias and a nice spike set up here uh, later on in the regular session for a bullish setup and uh, our daily vvap also plots uh, the vvap levels set uh, two and three days ago. These are also important key support resistance levels. So it's um, a good idea to be aware of where they are located. Here in the pre-session, we saw that ended here in a test of support at the prior value area high. And then after the regular open here, uh, we saw a failed breakout of the value area high here, and then a test of support here at uh, the VVAP of two days ago and yesterday's VVAP before it's uh, finally found its direction here, going for a second breakout here over the value area high. And just to make uh, clear where these levels uh, originate from, you can just look at where the VVAP stopped calculating at the end of the previous sessions. So here, the VVAP of three sessions ago stopped calculating here, and the VVAP of two days ago stopped calculating here. And then, of course, yesterday's VVAP ended up here. Finally, the premium session VVAP version also come with the integrated trading hours and a holiday calendar. These uh, abbreviated sessions are bundled together as one session. So that will give you the correct uh, prior VVAP and value reading for the following day. So this is a double day session, what we see here. Two sessions bundled into one, and then the VVAP is calculated for both of those sessions. Uh, that's basically all the US public holidays. And uh, we also have integrated uh, the trading hours for all the major futures contracts here. So um, all you have to do is to put this uh, on your charts and it will show you the correct VVAP regardless uh, whether you have a full session, regular session, or if you had a CME holiday for the previous session. All right, so I think that will uh, do it for now. In a different video, I'll uh, go over how you can use the VVAP uh, in higher time frames, weekly, monthly perspective. Those will be anchored at the week start or the month start or the quarter 
or you can even make a yearly VWAP. There is also a rolling VWAP to create uh, continuous weekly and monthly uh, VWAP calculations. Just before we wrap up here, I'm going to go over some of the most important options available to you in the VWAP. Uh, so here we have a five minute chart of the ES again. It's anchored here at the beginning of the full session. And so if we zoom in a little bit here, we can uh, go into the dialog box. And uh, so if you want to have a VVAP based on the regular trading hours, uh, you can select that here. And it's then anchored at the regular open. There is also a couple of different options for you uh, regarding the um, deviation bands. I generally just go with the standard deviation because that's most commonly used. And uh, for data input, uh, default here is uh, 50 tick bars, uh, but you can also use uh, minute bars, uh, your own tick bars, as well as primary bars for what you have on your chart. And uh, then as for display options here, you have uh, the mid bands that you can also display here. And then you will be able to have a reading of the 0 0.5 standard deviation area or the oh, 1.5 or the 2.5 that is mostly relevant for the higher time frame VVAPs. Uh, but that's also a option which is available to you. All right, so I think uh, that will uh, pretty much uh, do it for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, to me at info at lizardindicators.com. Otherwise, drop me a line in the contact form over at Lizard Indicators. Looking forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, take care and bye-bye.